welcome to the second video on our video series of orthorexia. This series is aimed at providing you with evidence-based information on everything that is to know about orthorexia. If you're totally new to this, you might want to check out the first video which covers what orthorexia is and how to recognize features of it. This current video is going to cover the background of orthorexia and the development of its diagnostic criteria. We're going to cover five main questions here. And the first one is how the term orthorexia first came about. So back in 1997, more than 20 years ago, there was an alternative medicine practitioner called Stephen Bradman. He noticed that many of his patients were too focused on their diets and harming themselves psychologically. They had such a rigid, fearful, and self-punishing lifestyle. He wanted them to feel a bit more relaxed about their diets, but it was difficult because they held their views so strongly. So he coined the term orthorexia as a therapeutic trick, and it worked. It opens up a new topic for him and his patients to discuss about. Orthorexia nervosa was formed an analogy to anorexia nervosa, which many of you may have heard of. But ordo meaning right in Greek to indicate an obsession with eating the right foods. Interestingly, when he first did that, he did not intend for it to catch this much media attention or consider it becoming an actual diagnosis. In the last five years, we're hearing the term orthorexia a lot more in the scientific literature, as well as on social media, especially Instagram and podcasts, where people are sharing their personal experiences with orthorexia. Of course, like any other eating disorder, features of orthorexia can vary from one individual to another. This comes around to question number two. Is there a formal diagnostic criteria for orthorexia? Not formally, no, not yet. However, there are a fair few that has been proposed. The problem is that people aren't sure whether it should be considered a separate diagnosis as it shares features of other existing disorders, particularly obsessive compulsive disorder and anorexia. So remember when we first discussed about the features of orthorexia in our previous video? My third question is that, can you spot anything from here that someone with anorexia might have? Yes, there are a few, and these are all highlighted here. However, orthorexia is actually quite different from anorexia for four main reasons. In orthorexia, it is mainly about what foods they eat, not how much. Orthorexic individuals are rarely associated with a low BMI, whereas that is one of the diagnostic criteria for anorexia. Orthorexic individuals do not necessarily have a fear of gaining weight, whereas that is a characteristic sign in anorexia. Even if they both have a goal of losing weight, in orthorexia it is due to the health benefits, whereas in anorexia it is due to a negative body image. Now let's look at obsessive compulsive disorder, otherwise known as OCD. This is a diagnostic criteria for OCD. Can you recognize any features of orthorexia in this diagnostic criteria. Yes, orthorexia actually fits quite well into this, except for the D criterion, as it is more focused on behavior around food. It would fit better as an eating disorder than a personality disorder, which is what OCT is. So if there is no formal diagnostic criteria for orthorexia and it doesn't fit as well into the diagnosis of anorexia or OCT, would you get a diagnosis at all if you had features of orthorexia? Well, currently it is most likely that an individual with features of orthorexia would be diagnosed as having OSFAT, which is known as Other Specified Feeding or Eating Disorder. This is basically a diagnosis for any eating behaviors that cause significant distress and impairment in areas of functioning but does not meet criteria for any of the other eating disorders like anorexia. That is all guys, so in this video we discuss five main questions, how the term orthorexia came about, whether there is a current diagnostic criteria for it, how it differs from anorexia and OCD, and what diagnosis someone with features of orthorexia might currently get. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out the two other videos of this series.